Hello, this is Tom from anti-proton.com. Today's episode is glassware. Well, laboratory glassware of sorts, like this Florence flask. I bought a small selection of a few pieces out here to show you and talk to you about a couple interesting little things. First off, I suggest you get yourself a little $1 ruler. Don't care if you do science or not. These are like the most useful little things in the world. All right, well, Today I just got a shipment of new stuff in. For example, I got this uh, beaker right here. <clears throat> Excuse me, this is a real Pyrex beaker too. Corning Pyrex beaker. Model 1000. Top of the line. This is a borosilicate product. So it's boron and silicon put together more or less. That's the good stuff. This right here is not quite the same thing. It's boron silicate, yes. It's from United Nuclear. I don't actually know the manufacturer of it. So it's probably some form of Pyrex glass as well. That's a Petri dish right there. I have, um, well, the top pops off of the Petri dish and you put your culture in it. And I'm not actually sure what sort of glass this is right here. I'm assuming it's a borosilicate glass as well. But let me tell you what I found out that I wasn't very happy about. Take this guy for a minute. Notice, of course, you always label your... Um, objects. This one just got clean. I haven't pulled the label off of it yet. This says Pyrex on it. See? P-Y-R-E-X. But I've discovered that apparently not all Pyrex is the same. It turns out this is not boron silicate Pyrex. This is, and what's weird to me is that it's called Pyrex, but it's actually soda lime. So it's sodium and, and what is lime? Calcium, I think. So this right here is not borosilicate glassware. I bought it at the store thinking to myself, cheap petri dish. Because if uh, you pull off the top, let me pull the top off of this thing. Oh my god, it's hard to get the top off. Alright, if you pull the top off, you have kind of a, um, kind of like a petri dish, but really, really, really tall. And there's glasses that are like this made for culturing and stuff. And I thought to myself, this could be a good substitute. I could use this as a cheap petri dish. Because real petri dishes are kind of expensive sometimes. But, lo and behold, it is not it is not really Pyrex. It is some kind of nasty soda lime crap. So I'm not sure what to do with these things. Um, I also use plastic containers too, but these are for like catching specimens and stuff. I wouldn't keep anything in there for too long. Like this little guy right here is full of methylene blue, which is fun. But just looks nice. I wouldn't actually use it for anything. This uh, a Florence flask over here is another one from United Nuclear, but this one is full of uh, this one is a borosil flask, and it is full of potassium chloride. Super duper duper fun. When using these uh, types of glassware and everything for my experiments, I always like to use transfer um, pipettes. Let me show you a transfer pipette. See, stick this in, squeeze it, pull something out, stick it in something else. These little transfer pipettes are a dream. They're great. You can use them for a while, and then when you're done with them, they're disposable. So you buy them in like 100 count packs. Because they're also kind of like cheap. And of course, test tubes. Again, these are uh, both United Nuclear, 15 by 155 millimeter. Sorry, by 150 millimeter, and 10 by 75 millimeter. Interesting. But. These are the beautiful little glassware pieces that I use. Some people like to use plastic, but I am glass all the way. I know the glass breaks, but it also lasts significantly longer. For example, when I do um, things with my microscope, I use glass only. Alright. So interestingly enough, what do any of you use? Do any of you use something different? Are some of you poly fans and you use the uh, plastic all the way? Anybody have any opinions on Pyrex? My uh, favorite glassware to use. I love Borso glassware. But anyhow, it's off to the microscope because I need to um, take a look at my amoebas. This has been Tom from anti-proton.com. Bye-bye.